Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss in detail about the doped conducting polymers. So, conducting polymers means the polymers which exhibits conductance. So, the conductance is mainly due to the presence of conjugated system. So, coming to the best examples of conducting polymers, they include polyacetylene, polynaphthalene, polyaniline. So, coming to the structure of polyacetylene, initially let us see the formation of polyacetylene. In general, polyacetylene is formed by the addition polymerization of acetylene molecules. So, they undergo polymerization and results in the formation of polyacetylene. So, here the polymer still contains the double bond. So, this polyacetylene can also be represented as a compound having alternative double bonds. So, it is the structure of polyacetylene which still contains double bonds in the polymer main chain. So, the presence of these double bonds are mainly responsible for the conduction since the electrons present in the double bond are loosely held and they are responsible for the conductance. But remember that the conductance of polyacetylene and especially the conducting polymers is low. So the conductance of these polymers can be improved by a specified process that is called as doping. So, it, doping is the process in which the polymer is either oxidized or reduced in order to improve the conductance of the polymers. So, the conductance of polymers can be improved either through oxidation process or through reduction process. And the process of oxidation or reduction is called doping. So, in this doping process, if the polymer is oxidized, then it results in the formation of P-doped conducting polymers. And if the polymer is reduced, then it results in the formation of N-doped conducting polymers. Let us see the formation of P-doped conducting polymers. So, here we will consider the example of acetylene. So, the conductance of acetylene can be improved through oxidation process. So, for the oxidation of polyacetylene, let us treat with Lewis acid. And the best example is ferric chloride. So, it is the Lewis acid. So, whenever Lewis acid is added to polyacetylene, then the polyacetylene undergoes oxidation. With the result, this polyacetylene carries positive charge and the counterpart carries the negative charge. So, in this way, it results in the formation of P-doped conducting polymers. So, whenever polyacetylene is treated with Lewis acid, then it results in the formation of P-doped conducting polymers. Then how to obtain N-doped conducting polymers? So N-doped conducting polymers can be obtained whenever polyacetylene is treated with sodium naphthalide. 
So let us see the equation. So whenever polyacetylene is treated with sodium naphthalide, so it is sodium naphthalide. Then what happens? The polyacetylene undergoes reduction. With the result, it gains excess of electrons. Then it results in the formation of N-doped conducting polymer. So in the case of N-doped conducting polymers, the charge carriers are negatively charged electrons. Whereas in the case of P-doped conducting polymers, the charge carriers are positively charged holes. So in this way, the conductance of polyacetylene can be improved either through oxidation process or through reduction process. So let us see in detail the mechanism of conduction in the case of P-doped conducting polymers and also N-doped conducting polymers. So coming to the P-doped conducting polymers, So, in the case of P-doped conducting polymers, how they can be obtained? Through oxidation process. So, let us see the structure of polyacetylene. So, for the convenience, let us consider the structure of polyacetylene. It consists of alternate to double bonds. So, in the first step, what happens? This polyacetylene is oxidized. So it undergoes oxidation. So oxidation means loss of electrons. So here one of the double bond undergoes cleavage. With the result what happens? There is no change in the position of remaining double bonds. But one of the double bond initially undergoes cleavage. With the result, each carbon atom gets unpaid electron. But here, through oxidation process, what happens? One of the electron will be eliminated. And hence, one of the carbon atom carries the positive charge. With the result, if we carefully observe the structure of polyacetylene, it results in the formation of ion radical. So, initially through oxidation, it results in the formation of ion radical. So, simply it can be called as polarin. Then, in the second step also, it undergoes oxidation. That means again one electron is eliminated. So in the second process what happens? One more electron will be eliminated from the polarin. Then what happens? It results in the formation of a bipolarin. So this electron is also eliminated. And there will be no change in the position of remaining double bonds. It results in the formation of a bipolarin. So, due to the presence of electron deficiency on the two carbon atoms which are very close to each other, then automatically the charge dispersal takes place through segregation process. 
so this bipolarin is highly unstable due to the presence of electron deficiency on the carbon atoms which are very close to each other so next it undergoes segregation so segregation means the dispersal of the charge takes place let us see how the dispersion of the charge takes place so here electron deficiency is present and hence this double bond will migrate towards the adjacent position in a similar way in order to fulfill the electron deficiency of this carbon atom this double bond will be migrated to adjacent position and this double bond will also be migrated to the adjacent position then what happens finally it results in the formation of a polymer in which charge dispersal is done here the charges are far away from each other and hence it results in the formation of a stable p doped conducting polymer in which the conducting levels are very high this is all about the mechanism of p doped conducting polymers so due to the presence of the electron deficient positive charges always electrons will migrate within the polymer and thus the conductance levels will be improved to the greater extent this is about the mechanism of p doped conducting polymers next let us discuss about the conductance of n doped conducting polymers so coming to the mechanism of conductance in n doped conducting polymers it takes place in the similar way so again here we will consider the polyacetylene so polyacetylene consists of alternate to double bonds so in order to get n doped conducting polymers initially it is reduced that means through reduction process what happens one electron will be gained gain of electrons is nothing but reduction that means here also one of the double bond undergoes cleavage and each carbon atom gets the single unpaired electron so in the first step what happens one electron will be added to the polyacetylene so no change takes place with respect to the other carbon atoms so each carbon initially gets the unpaired electron again we added the extra electron so one of the carbon gets extra electron so negative charge will be present on one of the carbon atom so it again results in the formation of ion radical again it can be called as a polarin so in the second step what happens again reduction takes place reduction means again one more electron will be added with the result the other carbon atom also carries the negative charge so whenever two negative charges are very close to each other then it is responsible for the instability of the polymer that's why through segregation process it results in the formation of the more stable polymer so whenever two charges are present on the polymer it is called as the bipolarin so in order to stabilize the bipolarin what is happening the dispersal of the charge takes place so negative charge is present means here it is the electron rich species and with this negative charge it will form a double bond here 
and hence this double bond will be migrated to the adjacent carbon atom similar thing happens on the other side that means it results in the formation of a double bond here and this double bond will be migrated to the adjacent position and this double bond will be migrated to the adjacent carbon atom and hence with the result it results in the formation of more stable bipolar n and here extra electrons will be present and with the result the charge dispersal takes place and hence more and more current will be carried by the polyacetylene in this way through reduction process or through oxidation process the conductance of the polyacetylene can be improved so let us discuss what are the applications of conducting polymers coming to the applications of conducting polymers these conducting polymers are highly useful for the manufacturing of sensors these sensors are highly useful as chemical sensors or bio sensors these conducting polymers can also be used for the manufacturing of leds so compact electronic devices can be manufactured with the help of conducting polymers they can be used for electromagnetic shieldings so these polymers can be used for the manufacturing of electromagnetic shieldings they can be used for the manufacturing of corrosion inhibitors they can also be used for the manufacturing of photovoltaic cells so these conducting polymers can also be used for the manufacturing of photo voltaic cells these are the few applications of conducting polymers if you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks for watching have a nice day